Next generation sequencing, also called massively parallel sequencing, refers to methods in which millions of DNA templates are sequenced simultaneously in a single reaction. The general strategy begins with a fragmentation of cellular DNA into small pieces. In most techniques, the cellular DNA is then amplified by the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, and sequenced by a method that usually involves DNA polymerase. The nucleotide sequence data is then assembled, using computer algorithms, into a continuous genome sequence. Here we will describe a method that employs fluorescently colored nucleotides in the sequencing reaction. To begin, the fragments of cellular DNA are ligated to oligonucleotides referred to as adapters. The cellular DNA fragments are denatured into single strands and then captured on a solid surface. The attachment occurs through complementary base pairing with oligonucleotides that are fixed to the surface. In the next step, PCR, DNA polymerase synthesizes a second strand of DNA, starting from the annealed oligonucleotide, which serves as a primer. The two long strands are now separated, leaving one strand attached by a covalent bond to a fixed oligonucleotide. The DNA fragment can form a bridge with another fixed oligonucleotide, and another round of PCR proceeds. The strands are separated, followed by additional rounds of PCR. After many rounds, a small patch of DNA forms in the location of each original cellular DNA fragment. These single-stranded DNA molecules represent two sequences that are complementary to each other. Now one of the strands is clipped at its attached oligonucleotide, leaving molecules of just a single DNA sequence. In this way, tiny islands of DNA form, with each containing many identical copies of a unique DNA sequence. The PCR step produces enough DNA template material for the following sequencing reactions. DNA sequencing begins with annealing a primer to the template. The primer is complementary in sequence to the adapter near the 3' end of the template. The primers provide a 3' hydroxyl group onto which DNA polymerase can begin to add nucleotides. The four types of nucleotides have fluorescently labeled groups that can distinguish them. DNA polymerase adds a nucleotide to the end of the primer. The added guanine-bearing nucleotide is complementary to the cytosine-bearing nucleotide in the template DNA. Note that the nucleotides have a blocking group on their three prime ends, so no additional nucleotides can be added at this time. The rest of the nucleotides are washed away. A laser induces the nucleotide to fluoresce and the color is recorded. Each spot on the solid surface has a particular fluorescence, depending on which nucleotide was incorporated into the growing strand. The fluorescent label and the blocking group are now removed from the nucleotide. Because the blocking group can be removed, this type of nucleotide is called a reversible chain-terminating nucleotide. The nucleotide now has the 3' hydroxyl group required for adding additional nucleotides. More nucleotides are now added, and another becomes incorporated into the growing strand. The free nucleotides are washed away, and the new nucleotide is induced to fluoresce. The cycle can be repeated up to 100 times. The sequences from all the spots are recorded simultaneously. Software packages assemble overlapping sequence fragments into longer pieces, and in this way determine the overall sequence of a genome. This process is fast enough to sequence a complete human genome in just a few days.